Hello YouTube, this is Bowtie Media, and today we've got a brand new review of Skrillex's Quest for Fire. In early January 2023, Skrillex had teased us with something. We weren't really sure what it was at the time, but it ended up culminating in two albums just two months later. In terms of this album release cycle, it felt like it absolutely flew by in the span of just two months Skrillex released single after single after single across both of these projects. But that fast pacing was also paired with a couple tracks from 2021 that landed on both this Quest for Fire and Don't Get Too Close. These two albums would end up being Skrillex's second and third studio solo albums coming almost nine years after Recess. Since 2014, it kind of seemed like Skrillex had taken a backseat to his own production, opting in for uh, producing and being on the credits of other bigger projects from the likes of Beyonce, Kid Cudi, Lady Gaga, Fifth Harmony, and so much more. And when we did get a slew of his own releases here and there, especially a couple in 2021, uh, 2023 felt a little bit different. Something about it and with the teaser made it seem like this was really a new era for Skrillex. It honestly seemed like Skrillex was able to do no wrong. There was just a deluge of praise coming in for all these brand new singles, everything Skrillex was doing, everyone was absolutely seemingly loving it. But of those two albums and the one that we're gonna be talking about today, Quest for Fire is a substantially more EDM focused project between the two. But unlike his run of previous releases in early to mid 2010s, uh, Skrillex's iconic dubstep was pretty much nowhere to be found. Tackling a real blend of genres, Quest for Fire is foundationally both a bass house and trap album. Unlike his other previous projects, this also hosts a absolutely insane amount of features, both this one and Don't Get Too Close, with the likes of Missy Elliott, Fortet, Fred Again, Porter Robinson, Noisia, just to name a few. But rather than paving the way for a new genre as Skrillex had sort of done with dubstep, he opted to kind of build upon what was already foundational in the EDM and music industry as a whole, uh, kind of creating a mosaic of EDM bliss. And of all the songs on this record, I think it's actually Rumble that sort of encompasses that notion better than any other song. Featuring both Fred again and Flo Dan, Rumble is a two and a half minute track that kind of dances along the lines of UK garage, dubstep, and grime. With a stuttering bass line and absolutely posterizing vocal performance from Flo Dan here. This track acts as the catalyst and initial release of this new era. Rumble has pretty much become the torchbearer of this new Skrillex sound. Similarly, the track prior on the track list, Tears with both Joker and Sleepnet, is a highlight that really blends the genres in which it resides in. It's got this kind of muted glassy synth lick that sounds so pleasing and manages to simultaneously hit both the higher and lower registers. And the subtlest of, don't just say the tears, uh, breaks up the beat enough to not make it too repetitive. But it's also hard not to highlight Leave Me Like This that starts off the track list with one to, what's got to be the biggest bass house song in music history. Featuring Bobby Raps and released as a single beforehand, I think this track will have the longest legs in terms of how much it'll be played at festivals and clubs. I think you'll be hearing this one for years and years and years, more so than any other, because it has that kind of certain longevity to it and and simplistic nature that is both engaging and easy to manipulate for any kind of mix. It's the perfect blend of an underground sound with its deep bass growls paired with a approachable yet fairly unintelligible vocal performance from Bobby Raps. As an album opener, it really sets the tone for what is coming down the line and subverts any expectations that this is just gonna be another dubstep record. Moving more towards the trap side of this album, each of Rattata, Xena, and Good Space all reside within that foundational tone of trap while each kind of approaching it from a vastly different angle. Rattata is the second track from the album and featuring Missy Elliott and Mr. Oizo and is your kind of more commercialized trap rap sound. Missy Elliott brings a lot of heat to this just short two and a half minute track while Skrillex and Mr. Oizo uh, play around with a very wet melody line that is very satisfying. Xena with Nybar Guti is personally my favorite track from all the new ones released in 2023 and undertakes a kind of Arabian trap beat. That is at least in the first two drops as the third takes a structurally side trance turn and uh, mostly closely resembles, I would say, Tech House. It's a mix up that you really should have seen coming in hindsight as it both works holistically in the track list and individually within this song. This is just another great example of how Skrillex is kind of ebbing and flowing all throughout this album with a variety of genres and sounds that you can't really pin down one specific 
genre or sound or tone really uh, from even the individual tracks as well as the whole thing. And then rounding off the more trappy style tracks, uh, Good Space teeters the line between a liquid trap sound with a future bass, making for a more commercially palatable track uh, for a wider audience. And while it was originally released in kind of mid 2021, Supersonic is hands down the best track from this record. Skrillex and Noisia had transformed Josh Pan and Dylan Brady's already solid song of the same name into what I believe to be one of Skrillex's best, if not the number one song in his entire discography. The fluttering synth melody, clean bass lines, ramping builds, and original vocals all culminate into an iconic track. And then closing out the project is still here with the ones that I came with uh, featuring both Porter Robinson and BB Borelli. Prefacing the track though is Hazel Theme, which is essentially an extended two minute intro that kind of transforms the already longest song into a practically seven minute finale. Of all the tracks on this record, still here is the most simplistic in nature, stylized as a very steadfast house beat. Borrowing melodies from both Porter Robinson's language and Skrillex's own unofficial Cliptown Imperium, uh, still here is without a doubt a bookender to an era of Skrillex. And as it should, the ending takes a slower, more subdued denouement, bringing the album to a full circle conclusion. All in all, Quest for Fire is undoubtedly Skrillex's most put together, intentionally crafted, straight up best record to date. Teetering the lines of so many genres and tones, Skrillex has taken what has already worked in the industry and fine-tuned it to create his own new soundscape. While foundationally a bass house and hybrid track record, uh, Skrillex found a way to give both the EDM community what they've been wanting all this time after all these almost 10 years while still appeasing the commercial listener as well. No longer is Skrillex the dubstep guy that sounds like robots having sex. He's proven his longevity and his creative genius. And with all that being said, in the end, Quest for Fire by Skrillex is going to score a bow tied 8 out of 10. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think of this album in the comments section below. I'd love to hear any and all thoughts. And uh, with that, I've been Bowtie Media, and I will see you guys in another video.